welcome to Keen on Keys. Today I want to show you the Yamaha PS3. It came out in 1980. From a historical perspective, it's a special instrument, because together with the PS1 and PS2, it has established the Yamaha Porter Sound series, and was thus involved in the birth of the home keyboards. At the same time, Casio started to produce home keyboards. Their first model was the Casio Tone 201. Until then, the bulky, furniture-like home organ was still very popular with beginners. But these small and portable things could do pretty much the same. In fact, the PS3 sounds a bit like a home organ from the 70s. It has digital-generated waveforms, but an analog filter, and these typical analog-sounding drums. 44 mini keys, an orchestra section with 9 voices and a sustain button. A rhythm section with four accompaniment styles, synchro start, tempo and volume knobs. You can play eight notes at a time, only four when the accompaniment is playing. The PS2 is pretty much the same, but it has only 37 keys and five voices. The smallest is the PS1, with just 32 keys, four sounds and four rhythms without accompaniment. All of them have a headphone, pedal and power jack, and they also run on batteries. And they all came in a small plastic case. Unfortunately, mine is gone. This wasn't meant to be a kid's keyboard. It was Yamaha's first portable solution. The successes of these models were the PS10, 20 and 30, with regular sized keys and some more rhythms. In the beginning, all of the Portisound keyboards were just called PS. Later, in 1984, Yamaha decided to call the Portisound keyboards with small keys PSS and the ones with regular sized keys PSR. The PSS series existed until 1997, but Yamaha still produces regular sized PSR keyboards. It's still in a good shape. I haven't used it a lot in the last 10 years, but unfortunately it isn't fully working anymore. Some bad contacts. Let me show you. The knobs are scratching and two or three keys don't make a sound. That shouldn't be a big problem, and it's not unusual when an old keyboard isn't played much for a couple of years. But I will have to open it to clean the key contacts and knobs. I would have opened it anyway, because I'm curious what I will find inside. Let's hear some music while opening it. This is a track I recorded a couple of years ago with the PS3 only. I just added a few FX samples. Of course I will clean all parts. In the meantime we can have a look at the board. A lot of analog stuff. Everything is written nicely on the board. These keyboards were quite expensive at the time and here we see why. This doesn't look like the interior of a toy keyboard. There's a VCA, a voltage-controlled amplifier, and a VCF, a voltage-controlled filter, and some other filter sections. This is the main chip, a YM1104. The PS2 has the same chip. The PS1 uses the YM1105. It produces the waveforms for the main voice and drums, which are then filtered and amplified. And it's also responsible for the key circuit. This IC is for the filter. The same one was used in some Yamaha home organs. 
This is the power amp. Here we have the buffer amp. This IC is for the master clock of the oscillation circuit. It won't be easy to clean the buttons. They are completely closed. I would have to desolder every button and disassemble it. But I won't do that now. They are still working quite okay. I guess pushing them a few times will be enough. But the knobs have holes. I will try compressed air to remove some dirt. And I will give them some of this contact spray. And twist them a few times. Maybe a second run. I will use the same contact spray to clean the key contacts. One of these pins is broken. I don't know if this happened while I was cleaning the top piece. But I will fix it with the super glue. Now everything is ready for reassembly. The keys need some grease. The keys are marked, so you can't go wrong. All the keys are working. And all of the volume controls are nice and smooth again. So, there's really not much to talk about. 8 voice polyphony, 9 sounds, 4 styles. That's it. Every instrument has its own button. You can select more than one, but only the one to the right will sound. There's a sustain button and some of the voices have vibrato. First is organ. This is the only instrument where the envelope for all held notes is re-triggered every time you press an additional key. String. Notice that it's singular. Just a single string.
Clarinet. Piano. Harpsichord. Guitar, my favorite. With sustain. Vibraphone, it has vibrato and sustain. Manual sustain makes no change. We have four simple rhythms without variation, fill-ins or ending. There's only a synchro start button. To start a rhythm, choose a style, let's say swing, Press Synchro Start, the light starts blinking, and start playing. Make sure you press one of the keys in the auto bass chord region. Otherwise, the rhythm won't start. But what if you want an intro with drums only? If you start the rhythm by pressing a key, you will also hear the main voice. This could be annoying. Push one of the buttons very slightly until the selected one comes up. Now all sounds are deselected and you can start the rhythm without hearing any unwanted sound. Now select the sound again and play along. If you want to hear bass and chords, you have to press single finger chord. Unfortunately, there's no manual chord mode. But if you press single finger chord while the drums are playing, the rhythm will stop. There are two ways to start a song with drums only and bring in the bass and chords later. You can use the volume control, probably the best way. You can start the drums without deselecting the main voice and play along. But you will get a short fade in, cause it's not possible to turn the knob quick enough. Or you can deselect all sounds. Chords, bass and main voice are connected to each other. When no sound is selected, the bass and chords will not play. Although single finger chord is selected. If you now select a sound, the bass and chords start playing. You can play the chords manually if no rhythm is selected. Just four types of chords are possible. Major, major seventh with a white key to the left, minor with a black key to the left, and minor seventh with a black and white key to the left. And if you push the sync start button, the chords will be held. You can start the accompaniment by selecting a rhythm again. Now it's time for a short multi-track recording.
this keyboard a lot. It's small and compact and has a good number of keys. The sounds are a bit muffled, but nice and warm. I guess I will use it a bit more in the future. But for now, that's all. Thanks for watching.